Hi there, I'm Mary Susie from Beat Me A Story. Today I'm gonna to be showing you how to make a whirly bird. Um, these are kind of like little pinwheels that you make. Uh, this is my most beginner version of this. Um, I've done a new kit in these uh, wonderful tropical rainbow colors, but I wanted to show you um, some of the other color variations that you could do. Uh, this one's orange, pink, and purple. And then you can see I've got the blue on blue. This one I hung on just a simple ball chain. So this makes a really cute pendant. Um, you can see in my hand about how big it is. These aren't very large. I can make this in our largest size of rubber O-ring and make them real big. And we can also make these in little micro sizes. Uh, they work great for team colors. Okay, so you could kind of do black and um, you know, uh, whatever your whatever your favorite team color is. And then, as I said, they do great pendants and earrings, and um, they can also be used where you um, use a head pin or an eye pin, and you put it through here, and you have beads to hold it in place, and you'll see it sideways in your design. So there's lots of different ways to use the Whirly Bird. I have um, a slightly more advanced project that I'll be bringing to you, and that's why I wanted to get this basic version of this out so that you have it and can practice with it in a little bit larger size before you try doing um, the micro-sized project that I have. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so you can see here that I've got everything laid out to, um, to do our entire project here. And I just want you to notice uh, this is a rainbow. It's more of a tropical or pastel kind of rainbow. We've got neon flamingo, bright orange, buttercup yellow, bright kiwi green, turquoise, and pastel purple, okay? And then I've taken that and repeated it. So these are 10 millimeter O-rings that are all along the center. And then I've got 18 gauge 3 16th jump rings sitting on the outside. And basically what we're going to do first is a uh, European 4-in-1. We're just going to do it with the, um, with the jump rings on the outside as opposed to being on the inside. And then you'll notice that I've got two extra rings sitting here and I'm gonna set these off to the side. These are for when we um, are ready to make our whirly bird go into a circle. Okay, so this is one of the easiest three-dimensional forms that you can make. And um, it's just, as I said, real simple because all we're gonna do is create a European four-in-one to start with. So in order to do that, where we've got um, our larger rings in the center, and of course these are closed rings, uh, there's no way to open them because they're rubber, and then our open rings are on the outside. Basically all we do is we put our second ring on top of our first ring, okay? And then I'm just gonna take my jump ring, I'm gonna pass it through both, and go ahead and Close the jump ring. And you'll notice I'm using um, Silver Frost here. I find Silver Frost works really, really well with, um, with pastels and tropical colors. It, it really makes them pop, um, gives them kind of a different, different look, different luster. Okay, so there is our pink and our orange. Okay, and you see I had those laid, uh, the orange on top of the pink, okay? And then once we have the two jump rings on either side, now you can see if I pick this up, they could both be on the same side. You don't, you don't have to worry how you're doing this to start with. But um, once we lay it back down, it should look like this. And then the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take our yellow, and we're gonna lay it on top of the orange. And then we're gonna do the same thing. Now, as we're working along with Whirly Bird, just so you know, um, like that pink one, the very first one, see how it's dropping down underneath? And uh, it's very likely to drop down and flop over, and don't worry about that. We can just resituate it once, once we're ready. Okay. 
Okay. Let's do another. See, now it's fully flopped down. That's okay. We can either fix it between every row or we can just ignore it and uh, and move on. I'll fix it just so you can see. See how I just flatten it out and pull the jump rings back out. But um, if you try and fix it every time yourself, you're gonna end up fixing it between every row and it's probably just not necessary. It's probably easier to just let it flop for now until we get our whole thing going here and then, uh, you know, fix it at the end when we're ready to work with it. Okay, so I'm gonna do a bright kiwi. Okay, I just laid it on top of the yellow. Okay, and then after this, I'm gonna go ahead and um, I'm gonna pause the video and I'm gonna finish up this entire row. I think you can see at this point that we're just gonna continue to do the same thing. Okay, and I wanna show you, see how that flopped down again? I just turn it up underneath and pull these rings off to the sides, okay, to get it right again. All right, so I'm gonna continue on. I'm gonna add all the rest of these. Um, these two, um, I will not do yet. So I'm going to do the rest of this and I'm going to go until I can go ahead and include the pastel purple and then we'll come back and show you what to do next. Okay, so as you can see, I've finished my uh, European 4-in-1 pattern. Okay, and we basically got two rainbows going in the tropical colors. And the next thing we're gonna do is um, cinch this up into a 3D form. Okay, so in order to do that, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take these larger jump rings. These are 18 gauge and a quarter inch jump rings. Um, the, they're really a couple sizes larger than the 18 gauge 3 16 And we're gonna pass it through all of these silver frost jump rings that are on one side. Okay, and then we're gonna close it. That's gonna make this go into a circle. So the, then after that, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go on the other side of the circle and we're gonna cinch up all these jump rings on the other side too, okay? So I'll show you how to do that. We're just gonna feed this in one at a time. And it's just like a little accordion. They'll fold right up on each other without too much trouble. You do have to, you can see right here, I'm gonna feed in a little bit more jump ring. Okay, give myself a little bit more space. And this one on the end is flopped down. Okay, so I'm gonna make sure to fold that back so that this final jump ring is facing in the right direction. Okay, and you can see I've just barely got enough room to grab on. But I'm gonna grab the other side. And you'll notice I used silver instead of silver frost. I did that for two reasons. First off, maybe to have a little bit of sparkle showing through. Okay, get a little shininess in there, just a tiny bit. Secondly, um, I know that doing this large jump ring is a little bit harder to close and I'm more likely to scratch the ring. So in order to prevent that, instead of using a mat or the silver frost one that I'm using, I went ahead and used the um, the shiny so that, you know, if I did get a little scratch on it, you wouldn't be able to see it, okay? So you see what this looks like now. And this is with one ring. Now, before we cinch up the other side, if you wanted to put something on the inside of this, you certainly can. Um, you know, you'll have to gauge that to your hole and see what's gonna, what's either gonna sit inside fully and maybe sparkle or um, even perhaps something that might stick out the hole. Okay, but we're not gonna do that today. We're just doing our basic, basic whirly bird. 
that's open in the center, okay? And I'm see how I'm just, I'm folding back my, um, all my rings, making sure that they're all in order before I get started. And this time, just because I'm right-handed, I'm gonna go this way, I'm gonna go clockwise around this time, so. But again, just, just be very cognizant of the fact that these, link, these uh, links on the outside need to be laying in the right direction. Everything needs to be kind of um, stacking like a little stair step. See how this is lower, next, next. So everything should be stacking in the right way in order to do this. And we're gonna kind of squeeze it back toward the inside as we go around. Okay, and we'll kind of cram it in there. Okay. One more I gotta get to. Let's get this guy inside that purple. Okay, I'm going through. You kinda have to use force and looseness at the same time. Um, you know, you wanna let everything ease gently through, but you have to be um, holding on to your rings pretty tightly too, especially when you go to close them. Okay, and then be real careful as you do steps like this. I'm just not getting that. Actually, what I can do is I'm gonna turn around, see how I'm flipping this around. This is the harder side to grab onto, so I'm gonna flip that around and grab that with my right hand so that I can then go ahead and close it. Okay, so that's kind of a tough uh, tough grab at the end. That second one um, can be a little bit tricky, but ultimately I've got it and we really are almost there. Okay, so you can see everything looks great until we get up here. And then it looks like, huh, they're all sticking up and wonky. What's going on there? Well, that's because, um, you know, we finished this without making the uh, European foreign one that was in, that we did in that first row continuous. So in order to make this continuous now, we're gonna have to add this, um, add one to the front, and then we're gonna add one to the back, okay? And if you look real carefully, and this'll just make sense as far as rainbows go too. Um, this, this ring that I'm gonna add right now, it's gonna to need to pass through the purple and the pink, okay? Which just makes sense, because had we been at the end of our rainbow and made it continuous, it would have been uh, the last ring and the very first ring that are getting linked together. Okay, and th this isn't too hard to get into there. I need to fiddle with it a little bit, but let's see. Let's go through the pink and the pastel purple. And then we need to make sure that, see how it's, it's uh, it has to pass through that center jump ring through the, through the 18 gauge 1 8 that we used to make this, okay? You have to concentrate a little bit more on your closures whenever you use any kind of frosted because they definitely show a little bit more. You can also do what I'm doing right here, just tuck them in, okay, so you won't see them. And then let's get to our back side, and I know it's our pink and purple again, and I'm gonna be passing through, so, oops. There we go. You can see one's missing right there. Just in case you lose your place. It's usually pretty obvious 
where things are missing. Okay, and I'm just feeding this through down into the piece. And then make sure, see how this is trying to come out in the center of uh, this ring right here? That would that would make it cross over. We gotta make sure that it is coming out through the center of the one eighth, or I'm sorry, the um, one quarter inch ring, but it's not passing through any of these ones that are creating the little spiral around it. Okay, and then there's our final closure. And there we have it. That is our whirly bird. So um, just give you a little bit more of a recommendation. I like to, um, when I'm hanging this, I usually just put a smaller jump ring through one of these rubber O-rings that I want to be at the top to hang it. You can also look at it this way too. Um, I know a lot of people during Halloween do um, pumpkins with these. And so um, you'll be seeing it from the side. So. Um, you'll be using an eye pin or something like that to go through the center of it so that it is facing, um, facing upward as opposed to sideways. Okay. So you can use this in all sorts of different ways. This also works with a whole lot of sizes. I find that this is the easiest size to work with when you're first starting out, just to learn with. And then, um, I'll, I'll have some more projects that use this. Um, in a different way and in, in perhaps some different sizes. Okay, so I hope you've enjoyed this video. Be sure to uh, like and follow us on YouTube and all of these supplies, um, especially in particular, our rubber O-rings are custom made for us. You can find at beadmeastory.com. Thanks so much.